Joining me now from Washington, D.C., Deputy Communications Director for the RNC, Cassie Smedley. Cassie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Now, uh, Cassie, uh, it's kind of incredible that we're in the middle of a pandemic and we have Democrats that are kind of flirting with the idea of impeaching A.G. Barr. Yeah, it's just the next option in their politi politicization of our country and of President Trump's administration. And that package that you just played, I want to be really clear with your viewers about what's happening in Portland and why it's so disgusting, frankly, that the mayor would have the audacity to say what he's done. The reason that federal agents have had to be deployed in there to protect the federal courthouse is because local officials in Portland have been incapable and unwilling to defend their city from absolute chaos and destruction. This is about local politics. And as much as Democrats want to make this about President Trump or the attorney general, for voters looking to make a decision on November 3rd, they need to look at their mayors, they need to look at their governors, and they need to look at city council members to decide who actually is looking out for them and who's allowing their city to be absolutely destroyed and torn into chaos. Yeah, it's a little confusing when people are calling it a constitutional crisis that there's a federal response happening. You would imagine that most of the people and the business owners in Portland in the area would actually appreciate the assistance. Cer certainly. And from those I've spoken with actually in that community, they do. And they are glad that they are getting help because their local officials have not only been unwilling to help, but have actually told their local police to stand down and not work with the federal officials who, again, are protecting a federal building. It's absolute in hysteria there, but it's outrageous that this is what's happening, not just in Portland, but in Seattle, in Chicago, in cities across America. And again, I encourage everybody, all politics are local. Look local. If you're dissatisfied, if your business isn't coming back, not because of the pandemic, which artificially halted our economy, it's not coming back because your local officials have allowed it to be burned down. That's something that we have to take our case and make our case on November 3rd. It's a very important election, especially locally. Yeah, and I, and I would argue that the federal response isn't too aggressive. And, and as you pointed out, it's no one's right to uh, try to burn down a building, vandalize, commit crimes, et cetera. But the question is, uh, even though the federal response, again, I, I believe it's the right decision, I don't think it's too aggressive, Politically speaking, uh, do you think that it's a smart move for the Trump administration? Why not let the local officials handle it since they think they got it? Well, because this has been happening for nearly two months before the federal officials finally showed up. So they, they didn't have it. And what the response that we were hearing on the ground from the people who care about their community and want to see businesses return to their downtowns were saying, somebody, please help us because our officials aren't willing to do it. And that's what really needs to be underscored here, that Democrats would, of course, have everything uh, be a Trump issue. And President Trump is still going out day after day to say, what is in the best interest of the American people? What are the American people asking me to do to fight on their behalf because their local officials won't do it? And again, obviously, my work here at the RNC is about uh, the election on November 3rd, but that's why this issue should be so important. Despite Democrats' best efforts to make everything about Donald Trump and to try and conjure up some sort of baseless impeachment effort once again, spending millions of taxpayer dollars on something that taxpayers don't believe it should be a priority for their elected officials and yet ignoring the destruction happening in great cities across America. I should say once great cities across America until Democrats allowed them to be literally torn down. Yeah, and Barr today, he made it a point to, sh to discuss what happened to George Floyd. And he says it's worth a discussion to reflect on what happened so that it doesn't happen again. Uh, but he also talked about how, you know, Black Lives Matter is basically not helping the cause. And I, to my numbers here, more people have died in the peaceful protest than all of the black people killed by police last year. But you don't hear about that very often. That's right. And I would say a quote, peaceful protest. They're peaceful until they're not. And that's when you start to see uh, violence happen. And one note earlier, as we were talking about protecting the courthouse in Portland, these law enforcement, federal law enforcement officials who are there, they're not doing the provoking. They're not even coming out until they have been provoked. So when you talk about uh, them putting tear gas on the protesters and the impact of that, that's because they've been provoked. And that's an important distinction. And I think that A.G. Barr, it was a poignant moment when he brought up Mr. Floyd. And of course, uh, lying in state in the U.S. Capitol right now is Congressman John Lewis, who is an incredible hero for civil rights, but also talked about um, ad nauseum, talked about doing it peacefully. 
and doing the right thing through the right voices and the right type, type of action, good trouble, as he called it. And so to see now in today's Democrat Party them encouraging, if you're Joe Biden, not saying a thing, one single word about the destruction and chaos happening in streets across America. It's a far different picture than what we've seen so many great civil rights heroes fight for in our nation's history. Yeah, and you talk about the election and you're just looking at what's happening with Barr today and, and the testimony and everything and how the Democrats are politicizing all of this. And as I pointed out, in the middle of a pandemic and now, again, the discussion to impeach Barr and they have a laundry list of issues with him. And I do remember, I think they, what was it, they tried to impeach President Trump <laughs> not too long ago. That was a total <laughs> failure. Yeah, that's in the baseless Russia investigation. And here we go again. The definition of insanity, right, is trying something over and over, expecting a different result. But again, I would point out, it's not the priority of voters. Voters are saying, look what's happening to my business in my family with our ability to pay our bills. And then, of course, in our cities where we see our downtowns completely boarded up because of the destruction of violent protesters. And what are my elected officials doing about it? Do they care about me and my family and our safety and law and order? And so far, the loudest voice on the side of law and order certainly has been President Trump. And I think, as A.G. Barr said today, he would welcome some other people to join in this effort in denouncing the chaos and joining in helping the rebuilding. But so far, President Trump has pretty much been alone in this effort. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.